Hello and welcome again in this chapter. This is about the use control and this foundational requirement uh, is also coming from 62443. So basically what is use control? It is about the control system shall provide the capability to generate audit records relevant to the security for following category. So we need audit records for all these categories, whatever is uh, mentioned below. So uh, uh, let's go one by one. So first is access control. So let us suppose if someone accesses some switch or let us suppose operator just logged on into the operating workstation and he started giving commands and he started his routine process. But let us suppose en engineer does a, a logic modification and uh, he uh, submitted, uh, he downloaded the program to uh, controller. So these types of access. So for this, he did access. He took, uh, took access of workstation. He took access of the controller. He took access of the network switch. Similarly, operator took, uh, takes access of uh, operating workstation. So all these accesses or any software is taking access of some resources of some database queries happening in the system. So all these accesses, whatever is happening there, this comes under the access control. So we need to retain the logs or the audit records like yes, this person has done this type of activity somewhere. So we are usually logging all those things. Just we need to keep those things and retain so that in the time of the need or the forensics, if something happens in the environment at the later stage, we can show it to the authorities that yes, we have the audit log. So this is the first thing that we need to generate and re keep the uh, audit records of the access control. Now second is the requester. So let us suppose if some user use uh, wanted to retrieve the backup from the backup server and due to the credentials uh, mismatch, it got uh, rejected. So this is one type of the error generated or might be the file is corrupt. It was not correctly so that there was an error generated. So this type of errors, whatever errors is happening. So those will also generate a record. We need to uh, keep systems in place that we should ensure that uh, yes, uh, this type of error happened and this request error has been logged in a file. Uh, similarly, moving forward, operating system event. So operating system, we use basically most of the control systems. Uh, workstations are basically hosted on the Windows operating system. It could be Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11 or it might be some Linux, uh, Red Hat Linux or some Debian Linux system based or, or some proprietary operating systems uh, might be some containers inside inside the proprietary automation or application servers. So we need to ensure that all these operating systems, whatever day to day activity is happening on there, it could be user access, it could be a data uh, movement from one place to another movement, it could be delete of some file, uh, addition, creation of some folders, creation of some files. So those type of all activities, uh, it should be logged uh, at a place whatever is done at the operating system level. So if someone is changing the IP address or if someone is changing the host name or or uh, someone taking remote of some other other uh, system from one place. So all these types of activities, we need to uh, create the records, audit records for all these activities at the operating system level. Now, uh, moving ahead, control system event. So on operating system, what resides? There is a application software. So if it is a DCS, there will be Foxboro application or it, if it is SIS, there will be a TriStation application or it is a like in DCS, there are many examples like it could be a Merson system application or it could be a Honeywell application that, that will reside on this operating system or if it is a SCADA, there will be some SCADA applications running on it. So now user accesses that a SCADA application or that proprietary application to do the logic changes or do operating changes or do some configuration changes on that platform. So those need to, all those systems or applications must have capability to generate audit logs for those things. Let us suppose if we log into the windows, then we need to log into that application also. And if that login failure also happens, we need to log that event. And eventually we need to collect all those events at a single place also. Or if someone uh, initiated a program download and program download failed because uh, due to some reasons. So that is a one of the event we need to uh, catch that event also. So this is the control system events. Moving forward is the backup and restore events. It's a similar like we know that we store backup at regular interval on a uh, standard repository server. So uh, we need to take backup of the system, 
we need to uh, do restore in that uh, time of need whenever restore is required so whether backup has been saved correctly backup was finished properly or not or backup related errors so whatever incidents or steps or sequences happening in the backup we need to generate logs for that and we need to re, uh, store those logs or events in our database as well so that is related to the backup and restore and in case if we are restoring something it might be the case of the emergency or it might be case of the regular testing process uh, if restore is successful or restore is a failure we need to we need to uh, keep a uh, log or uh, events for for backup and the restore events all right configuration changes so let us suppose if we are doing some configuration changes at the network level or the endpoint level all the application level then then that should also be uh, stored somewhere if we have a configuration management system then everything will go through that if we have a permit system then it will go through the permit systems like we cannot change anything without a proper permit or uh, permit by the operation department so, so we need to uh, take care of uh, these configuration changes then uh, we moving ahead potential reconnaissance activity so uh, detection tools need to be installed in the premises so that if, if some reconnaissance activity what is reconnaissance like exploring or searching or try to identify something these all things are called reconnaissance so basically uh, we um, some network reconnaissance activity or system identification activity is happening it could be a physical it could be a, a digital so uh, digital examples are like uh, just uh, doing a nmap scan from the kali linux in the network to identify the uh, number of ip addresses whatever is being used or the operating system of the devices the mac id of the devices the open ports so these types of activities if performed on a normal running plan so that is a deviation from uh, normal working procedures so th those activities if it is uh, happening we need to put up um, a system in place that that can detect these things and create a audit log for that now uh, audit log event so if there is a e any audit happening on there so uh, might be we have some automatic uh, tool for doing the audit of the systems uh, as per some compliance as per some state or national or or some compliance so those audit log events is also required if it is a vulnerability assessment or vulnerability scanning so if it is passing failing so those type of events we need to keep keep as well so these are the major categories where we need to generate the audit logs audit records is required now how can we do this this we can do by continuous monitoring so we can continuously monitor network and device activity in a real time and alerts or logs events of interest such as network reconnaissance activity unauthorized access and communications failed and successful remote login attempts error and malfunction indicators from field devices control system events a example like maintenance operations and ics device configuration changes like program from web update so we need to monitor all these areas all these areas of interest so uh, so we need to monitor this thing so if something happens in these areas we need to uh, check whether what what's happening out there then uh, alerts and logs contain all the details required to analyze and response to the event so whatever alerts or logs we are generating that should follow a proper template proper format so there is an international standard for logs and events also so uh, it should contain timestamps so timestamps should uh, everywhere like it will be vital information uh, if we want to create a, a sequence of events then source in the target it should be coming directly from the source and where it, it uh, what was the target information then event type what are the potential causes impact and the recommendations so alerts and logs can be filtered and exported for offline analysis for inclusion in audit record so if you go into windows event viewer you will find uh, that there are the alerts and logs out there and we can see we can uh, find the timestamp we can see source target we can see information so if you want to see how does the event look like so if you go to windows admin uh, windows event viewer you will see admin uh, logs are there these these are the warnings these are the errors these are the warnings and you can see that it has a level it has a date and time stamp it is a source it has event id task categories also there if you go for the details you will find some of the details here written um, about like the device is not ready performance data for service is not available so these type of details are required for the log whatever we do